All right, guys, welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to get data from the street.txt file and show emotions on a graph using matplotlib. Now, instead of getting data from the street.txt file, what we can also do is get tweets from twitter.com and do sentiment and emotion analysis on those tweets. So, for example, if we search for coronavirus, you will be able to see what kind of emotions people are putting in into their tweets. And we will be getting those tweets from Twitter by using this library in Python known as get old tweets. Three. So this is a package, a Python library that helps us get tweets without using the official Twitter API. That's just too cumbersome and it takes a lot of work. I mean, you can do it if you want to, but I'm just gonna use this get old tweets three library. And how do you get it? You just go to github.com, mortal, M -O -T -T -L, and get old tweets three. After you go there, just read a little bit so that you have an idea of what's happening inside this package. And to install it, if you're not using PyCharm, just open up your terminal and type in pip install get old tweets 3. Make sure that the G is in capital, the O is in capital, and the T is in capital too. And if you're using PyCharm, you can just go to file, go to settings, and then go to your project interpreter and get this get old tweets 3 by clicking on this plus icon and then just typing in get get old and page three and then click on it and click on install package. I've already installed it inside my project, so I'm not gonna install it again. But anyways, after you have installed it inside your project, let me just minimize this over here. I'm just gonna create a new file inside our project. I'm just gonna call it Twitter analysis. I'm just not gonna touch my old main.py file, just make sure that everything is differentiated properly. So after you have installed the get old tweets three package and created this new file, we are just gonna import our new package and our old package name is get old tweets three. And we are gonna import it as GOT, Game of Thrones. No, it's not Game of Thrones, it's just a variable so that instead of referencing this big sentence of get old tweets three, we can reference it as GOT and it will work the same. Now we are just gonna create a function and we're gonna call it get tweets and we're gonna put a colon after that. And now what I want you guys to do is go back to this GitHub page, that is github.com, model get old tweets three and scroll down and look for this example over here at the bottom, which says import get old three at GOT, we have already gotten that. And now we want to get tweets by query search. So we are just gonna copy this from here and now we are gonna paste it on a screen inside our get tweets function. And now over here, I'm just gonna print, uh, I'm just gonna call this function. So let me just call this get tweets function. And what this function should do is it should get the query of European refugees from 2015 to 2015, and it will only get one tweet. As you can see, there's also a zero over here. So let's actually run this and see if we get our only one tweet about European refugees. So let's click on, uh, let's run this main.py file. And actually we are still running our main.py file. We need to run this new Twitter analysis.py file. So right click on it, click on run Twitter analysis.py. And as you can see, the tweet is here. So now what we can do is instead of writing European refugees, we can just go with uh, something else like coronavirus, which is all the rage right now and make sure that you are safe. But uh, that's not the topic of this video, so let's get back to it. And we're gonna put in the date of 2019. So this is basically set since. So from when do you want the tweets and set until. So let's say we want the tweets from 2019. Let's go with the eighth month and until 2020. And let's go with uh, maybe February 02. And the date should be 28 because February has only 28 days. And this was a leap year, by the way, 2020, so it might have 29 days, but let's just go with 28, it's fine. And then uh, let's, uh, instead of going with one tweet, let's just go with 10 tweets. And then we need to remove the zeros from here because we want all of the tweets and all of the tweets are gonna be stored in a kind of a list form inside this uh, tweet variable. So we're gonna just remove this over here. And instead of confusing it with just one tweet, let's just change this to tweets. And now instead of uh, printing all this out, we need to save all these tweets one by one inside uh, this. So basically this tweets right now is uh, object list. So for example, if you print this right now, tweets, you'll be able to see that it has a list of 10 tweets, but they're all in form of objects. So we need to get the text from all of these objects and store them inside another variable. So that is pretty easy. We are just gonna create a new variable and we're just gonna call it text underscore tweets because we want the text from these tweets. And we're gonna make sure that it's equal to, we're gonna put in a bracket and we're gonna put in another bracket and I'm just gonna write tweets. This is uh, this tweets variable over here and we want the text from it. So I'm just gonna write dot text. So this, whenever you want a text from an object, you just write dot text after it so that you will be able to get text. 
but now what we want is uh, this should be just tweet actually so because what we're gonna do after this is for tweet in tweets so this is going to iterate through all of the tweets and one by one is going to store it inside this variable of tweet and then whatever the tweet is it's going to store and get stored inside this tweet variable and we want the text from this tweet variable so we are writing dot text and it's going to save inside this tweet underscore text text underscore tweets and let's actually print this out and see if it works i'm just going to explain this once again if you guys are confused so let's just click on play button and see if it works so you can see that the 10 tweets are there. California is monitoring at least 8,400 people for coronavirus, governor saves, all of these tweets are here. So what we have done is that a list of objects got stored. So let me actually just add a comment so that you guys don't get confused. List of objects gets stored in tweets variable. All right. So this is the tweets variable and then what we are doing over here is that we are iterating through all of these list of objects one by one and then we are storing it inside this tweet variable and this tweet variable we want the text of and then we want the text to be saved inside this text underscore tweets variable. So first iterating through tweets list storing them temporarily in tweet variable and let me just go to the next line storing it actually let's just write get text and store it as a list inside text underscore tweets so that is why we have put an extra brackets over here this is just a fancy way of storing it inside a list if you put a bracket over here whatever the result of this for loop is it gets stored inside this bracket over here and this bracket also means that it's a list and then outside bracket stores it as a list inside this text underscore tweets. So we are just printing them out and you can see that all of the tweets are over here. Now what we want to do is get emotions from these tweets that we have already gotten. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this from here and going to paste it somewhere, maybe somewhere down below. And then I'm just going to copy, let's just cut and paste this, uh, let's say just below over here. And uh, instead of writing this um, text, open this reading from a text file, we are going to read the tweets. So what I'm going to do is instead of printing text tweets, I'm just going to return this text tweets from here. And I'm just going to create a new variable of text, text equals to get tweets. And I'm going to just uh, kind of just comment it out for right now and uh, text to lower. And now it's giving us a kind of an error which says that uh, it's only for the string and not for a list. So good thing I made a mistake over here because you guys understand, should understand that this dot lower function can only be used on a string. And right now this text that is being returned from the text underscore twist only contains a list. So what we need to do is we need to convert this list into a big huge string. So how do we do that? What I'm going to do is instead of writing get underscore tweets over here, so what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to create a variable of text with an empty string and nothing inside it. And then we are just going to just write a variable text underscore tweets. So this variable is different from what we are returning over here, but it's going to be the same value. So I'm just going to write get underscore tweets. Now the list is going to be stored inside this text underscore tweets variable. And then we are going to get the length of this list. So we're just going to create a new variable called length. And then we're going to get the length by writing in len function. And then inside this, a list that we want the length of. And this is going to return a number of the length of the amount of uh, elements inside the list. So what we're going to do now is let me just print this out first so you guys know what's happening over here. So right now we have 10 tweets. So I'm just going to print this out right now. Um, hopefully it won't give us an error. I mean, it will give us an error because the string is kind of empty right now. But whatever so as you can see we have printed out the number 10 so that means the length of the tweets is 10 obviously you can just uh, kind of enter it manually because you have also set the max tweets at 10 but we're not going to do that we're just going to put in we're going to find the length of the tweets so that if even if even if we change this number we don't have to worry about changing the number over here too so now we can just create a for loop for i in um, range so this is a function that we are going to use we are going to go from zero to the length of the tweet so we're just going to write in length Put a colon over here and right now we are going to use this text variable that we have over here and we're just going to write text underscore tweets and we're going to get the value of these tweets by writing i and zero and then we are going to add a space between different uh, strings 
and then we are just gonna write text so it's gonna basically add them to this empty text variable and write a plus it's a basic addition of strings if you have ever done it like in high school and stuff so let me just format this properly so that it looks good so what we have done right now is we have created an empty string and stored it inside this text variable then we have gotten the tweets from this get tweets function and stored it inside this variable of text underscore tweets then we got the length of the list and then we iterated through the entire like length of the list one by one so this value will be for zero one two three and so on it will go to line and then we got the text underscore tweets variable and we moved through each of the elements inside the list so first it will go to 0 comma 0 and then it will take the value of this uh, it can be any tweet about the coronavirus and it's going to add it to the empty list or the empty string of text and it's going to store it inside this text variable so let's actually print this out so that you guys can see what's happening behind the scenes each iteration so i'm just going to play this and let's see what happens so it's going to take a little bit of time let's minimize this so you can see that uh, each of the strings so first california has been printed and now another iteration on the second iteration it adds this string and then it adds the first string again california is monitoring so slowly and slowly all the strings are getting into one string and they are being stored inside this text variable so now like we can just remove this print statement over here and we can run this program to find out the emotions so instead of doing 10 we are going to do a thousand so that we have a bigger data set of like the all the emotions present let's run it and it's going to take a little bit of time because it's getting like a thousand tweets and now you can see there's a graph with all the values of the tweets i don't know why people are being happy and sad equally but you know like maybe they are happy that coronavirus is being treated or something like that but anyways this is the graph that you're getting after we have extracted all the tweets and now you can just try it on different like tweets values and see what's up um you know <laughs> let's just try out something else i mean you can close down the video it's already finished but if you want to hang around and have some fun so we are going to go with donald trump and we are going to go with let's go with 2018 and uh, let's go with the first month and uh, 2019 let's go with 2019 and let's see like all the emotions and stuff that are present within this one year so let's run this again and we are going to go with thousand um, tweets again otherwise it's going to take more time like if you want like a more accurate data set you should probably increase it to like 10,000 or more all right, so let's see the results. And most of the people are fearful, sad, happy, attracted. I mean, like different emotions, but it's very interesting to see like what's going on in the society and what like people are thinking uh, using this tool. So that's like the most fun I ever like ever have. I just like kind of check out the trending tweets and then I run this program and see what are the emotions present on different people who are tweeting them. And obviously if you increase the max tweets to a huge number, you'll get more accurate results. But anyways, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. And I usually don't ask this, but like make sure if you like it, you subscribe, like the typical YouTube stuff. But anyways, guys, in the next video, we are going to talk about the library of Python for natural language processing and sentiment analysis called NLTK. It is like a very popular tool inside Python and everybody does it for like sentiment analysis and like all kind of text analysis. So we are going to be looking into that like tomorrow and we're going to be changing a lot of things inside our main.py file and we're going to be converting all the stuff that we have done manually uh, to NLTK programs and that's going to make it a lot more quicker and a lot more simpler. So anyways guys, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.